Welcome everyone. Today I'll be going over the best head, chest, arms, feet, shirt, and pants gear for PvP. As a heads up, I won't be mentioning healers any in this video since I haven't kept track of what gear pieces they prefer. It's probably really similar to what DPS classes run though. First up we have head slot gear. The Whisper's Hood of Quiet is usually the best head slot item for squishy DPS classes like Rogue and Ranger. It can also be a best in slot item for high end builds. It offers stacks of both accuracy and movement speed. If your class can proc at least two or three of these stacks fairly often, this is worth running. The next piece will take me a moment to find. The Midnight's Cowl is usually the best head slot item for a tanky DPS build. It's got the same bonus as the old Chitter's Fangs gear piece. This item is commonly worn by wizards and fighters and it can also be good on other classes. The Redcap's Cap is very similar to the Whisper's Hood of Quiet. It is a great substitute for players who don't want to go through the, tr the hassle of trying to get a Whisper's Hood. Crown of the Pit Fiend here is still good on players who don't have their power capped, though keep in mind you'll only benefit from it if you are below 50% HP. Helm of the Sky Blazer is still good for just the Rogue class, but it's no longer best in slot for them either. So Rogues, this was a good piece on, but it's not really optimal anymore. Moving on to chest pieces. <coughs> oh, what am I doing? Bone Devil's Rib Cage is best in slot for rangers and rogues. It can also be a best-in-slot item for high-end builds. It is usually paired, with up, paired up with a stat-stacking headpiece item like Whisper's Hood of Quiet. Notably, some ranger builds are specifically designed to maximize their procs from ribcage. As an example, Razorleaf built a solo queue specialized ranger build a while back that deliberately avoids stacking HP, and it also ran around 46k item level. Rogues don't get as many ribcage stacks as rangers do, but this gear piece is still significant on them as well. Ribcage directly impacts how experienced rogues fight versus some classes. A good example is rogue versus fighter. If the rogue is able to kill the fighter at all, the rogue should drop a smoke bomb on the fighter, attempt to build up a few ribcage stacks using gloaming cut, and then quickly attack with their encounter powers. Doing so will result in the rogue hitting a lot harder than they normally do, which allows them to win a 1 versus 1 if the, if the fighter makes a mistake on chaining their survival mechanics or is built badly. This tactic doesn't work if the fighter has a lot of movement speed and is smart enough to stay out of the rogue's smoke bomb though. Notably, the ribcage stacks don't always proc from gloaming cut if the fighter is tanky and is close to full HP. But attacking with some gloaming cut first still reduces the fighter's HP and shield some. 
Rogues with ribcage on also have an even higher incentive than other rogues do to attack low HP targets with gloaming cut. This includes NPCs such as Mirage clones and Soul Puppets. Incidentally, you can also use Mirage clones and Soul Puppets to build, ac to build action points up without exposing yourself out in the open. Uh, that's not really on topic, but I figured that was a good time to mention that fact about AP gain. Uh, moving on to Forsaken Scout's Hide. Forsaken Scout's Hide and Crone's Hide are both best in slot on tanky classes and beginner builds. They have the exact same power as each other. The only difference is the stats they grant. The self-heal on them is good when combined with other sources of self-healing such as Holy Avenger, Negation, Drowned Weapons, and Providence. This self-heal procs when you deflect attacks. Uh, for some reason, you usually deflect more often than you critically hit even if your critical chance is listed on your sheet as being higher than your deflection chance. Part of the reason for that is probably because deflecting hits does not require you to be attacking in order to occur. You have to be attacking in order to proc a critical hit. This is why I recommend the deflection version of this healing power instead of the crit version of this healing power. Some of the other chess pieces in the game have the crit version. Uh, for example, this Lion's Guard Raid Leathers right next to it. This piece here has the crit version of this self-healing power. And in a nutshell, the deflection version on Forsaken and Crone's Hide is a little bit better for most players than the one on Lion's Guard Raid Leathers or other older items are. Fairy's Tunic is the next best thing for rangers who couldn't get their hands on a Bone Devil's Ribcage. It grants straight 5% more accuracy in exchange for losing some combat advantage, which is definitely worth it on a ranger. Garbs of the Herald is still a good option for players who don't have their power capped yet. It was commonly worn by Whisperknife Rogues a couple modules ago. Weathered Wood Hide grants 5k defense. It's not as good as the Forsaken or Crone's chest pieces, but it's still a good placeholder. Like it's still a good placeholder chest piece for new players. This is assuming the bonus from it actually works though. I heard a rumor the bonus wasn't working, but no idea if that was fixed or not. Next up we have gear for your arms. The very best arms gear for PvP is Arms of the Last Resistance. It grants 5% more power and defense when there are no teammates within 30 feet of you. At first glance, that bonus looks like it would be bad for classes that work with their teammates a lot, but this turned out not to be the case. This bonus is still up often enough to, often enough to be very worth it even for Rogue and Ranger and it still helps these classes win in worst case scenarios like getting stuck in a 1 versus 1. Wrist Guards of Precipitation are a stronger version of the Lion's Guard gloves. Bards and Rogues both benefit from these if they aren't capped on power yet, and they can also be good on other classes as well. Spiked Defenders Bracers are somewhat outdated, but are still a great option for players that don't have the newer gear. Uh, give me a sec to find this next item. Arm 
terms of the living fire can be good if you aren't capped on power yet. They grant a lot of power as your HP decreases. This item used to be commonly used by Whisper Knife builds a couple modules ago. Moving on to feet gear. Fairy steps are best in slot for both rogue and warlock. They are also good on other classes. They grant a lot of movement speed and power. Due to the proc conditions, this bonus combines well with Arms of the Last Resistance that I talked about earlier. Midnight's Whispers are also a solid option. They offer a lot of defense and critical severity. Slips of the Rain, which I can probably find in here. There it is. Slips of the Rain are easily one of the strongest, if not the strongest, defensive boot pairs. They might be better than Wisps of the Shadow Demon, even. But I haven't seen the testing results, so I can't be certain. Assuming this info is correct, then these boots are best in slot for bards, wizards, and ranger builds that are, have been set up to do a li have a little bit more sustain than your average solo queue glass cannon ranger does. So this would not be something that all rangers would use, but this is something that your kind of a little bit more sustain oriented rangers would use. Not quite tanky ro uh, not quite tanky rangers, but uh a little bit tankier than something that Razor Leaf would run. Wisps of the Shadow Demon are a strong option for tanky classes and builds with a lot of self-healing. Wizards and Bards are some of the classes that often run these. Boots of the Herald are outclassed by some of the newer options, but they're still a solid choice for players looking to increase their defense. Rangers and Rogues used to run these before better options were released. Moving on to Shirts. As you can see from the text on the screen, there are a ton of options for shirts. They are all really close together in performance too, so if you have any of these, there is no pressing need to go get a better one. Now I'm not sure if these plus five shirts from Shandar were actually... Oh, we're in the wrong section. Okay, if you look here, like, I'm not sure if these plus five shirts from Sharandar were ever actually released or not. I've never seen anyone that has one on. I know for sure that you can get the plus four versions. Uh, one of the plus four shirts dropped from me from a Sharandar BHE. It was this one you see on the screen here. I'd say that the cooldown reduction bonus many of these shirts have, including the one on the screen, like this is best in slot for basically everyone right now. But there are some other good bonuses as well that give you more action points or more power that are good too. Notably, the Shirt of the Hell's Interrogator power bonus is much better than it looks like it would be. And if you give me a sec, I'll go find that for you. There it is. Okay, so this bonus on this shirt is much better than it looks like it would be. I used to run this shirt several modules ago. The bonus is up most of the time, in part because any enemy that is above 75% HP that you are marked as being in combat with will proc the bonus. 
So in group fights, it's been practically a guarantee that you'll have this bonus. The bonus also took a few seconds to wear off when you are no longer meeting the prerequisites for keeping the bonus active. This bonus also was turning itself back on randomly, even when there weren't any above 75% HP enemies nearby. The more popular upper packed bra brands of the Inferno and upper packed brands of the Blaze Bond used to be broken, but I think their bonus was later fixed. This is, however, less reliable, even if it's fixed, than the one from the Shirts of the Hell's Interrogator, assuming no ch recent changes in their mechanics. Probably they work exactly the same as before. Moving on to Pants. <clears throat> These are pretty straightforward. Ideally, your pants grant a lot of defense. And you also want them to grant movement speed if possible. Now, these pants also have plus five versions from Sharandar. In here somewhere. Yeah, down here, there's also some plus five pants. And again, I'm not sure these were ever actually released, because I've never seen anybody use them. And I've never gotten one. But these plus four ones are definitely dropping. Now, speaking of movement speed on pants, the Imperator's Executioner trousers here are something I'd recommend every player have a pair of in their bank in case the devs ever remove those outdated items sold by the PvP vendors. The bonus granted by these pants is an unusually large amount of movement speed that pairs really well with movement speed granting boots like the newer Fairy Steps or the older Bandit Lord's boots. Also, in case anyone thought the tiny amount of stats you see here was what these boots actually grant in PvP, it's not. The stats and item level for these boots increase while you are on a PvP map. I believe that is everything important, guys. Uh, see you next time.